Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now a few weeks ago I reviewed the Quanchang UVK5 and since then a whole load of developments have been made for that radio. Now even as a standard radio it was pretty good. Recently I received this radio, the Quanchang UVK6. So in this video we'll take a look at its features, test its output power and check the signal quality using a spectrum analyzer. Then later in the video, we'll move on to test some custom firmware, which adds a whole load of features to this radio. Our usual accessories are supplied, such as the manual desktop charger, belt clip, USB-C cable, and the antenna. Now the good thing is that you can charge this radio using the USB-C port on the side of the radio itself, but the desktop charger is mains powered. Now the label on the battery states that it has a 1600 milliamp hour capacity, which is most likely true as this value is not overinflated like we've seen on other radios in the past. Now the serial number sticker on the radio itself also shows an FCC ID. So when it comes to testing the signal quality later in the video, we should see a good result, or will we? Another thing to point out is that on the serial number sticker, the output power is stated at less than 5 watts, which is nice to see rather than those greater than 10 watt rubbish stats we've seen in the past on other radios. So does this mean that Quangsheng are doing something right with their radios? Now the front of the UVK6 looks pretty decent and the LCD surround is, what I can tell, made from metal. To keep the button count down, there's a lot of functions which can be changed using the F button on the keypad on the lower right, such as power levels, changing VFO, switching between memory and VFO, and even activating a Vox mode. You just press the F key and then the appropriate function to activate it. Now the keypad feels very sturdy and button size is the same that we've seen on other radios like this. Now down the left side of the radio, we find three buttons. The top is the PTT, then the lower two function buttons activate a torch mode, which uses the white LED on top of the radio. And then the other function button is to open the squelch momentarily. Of course, you can change these in programming software if required. Now on the right side of the radio, we find our regular little rubber flap, which covers up a couple of nice looking holes. These are for either a speaker mic or a programming cable which incidentally I did not get with this radio, so I just use my standard multi-radio cable. Now below this we find a smaller flap, which when pulled open we find a USB-C port. Now this is for USB charging. Now although it's nice to have USB charging on the radio itself, I think it would have been better to have the USB port on the battery. Maybe there are some optional extras where the battery has its own charging circuit, I'll need to investigate that further. Now on the top of the radio, we find the antenna connection, a white LED, which as mentioned is used for the torch and an on and off rotary control, which is also used for the main volume. Now powering on the UVK6, the first thing you'll notice is how clean and easily readable the display actually is. With two VFOs with dual watch feature, you can have a pre-programmed memory on the top and a dulled frequency VFO on the bottom, or vice versa. As mentioned before, you can use the F button to access other features. Just press that F button and then press the appropriate button. Each function is also printed on the buttons, so you don't have to remember where they are. To change frequency, you can either direct dial on the keypad, or you can use the up and down arrow buttons there on the left. Now these buttons are also used when in memory mode, to change the memory channel. Now going through the extensive menu is very similar to the K5 model with lots of features and functions fully accessible from the menu. Now there is one setting which is quite annoying and that's the backlight setting. Now personally, I like to have the backlight on all the time. It kind of helps me remember that the radio is actually turned on. However, on this radio, you can only set the backlight to remain on for a few seconds with the standard firmware. Now, luckily in the custom firmware, which I'll show you later, there is a solution to this. Well, kind of. This is M0, the Q 
WW, Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey, testing the audio transmission from the Quangsheng UV-K6. This is the Quangsheng UV-K6, testing the audio transmission, talking around two to three inches away from the microphone. Over, over. So if we take a quick look at the power output from the K6, we can see an RF output of around 3.8 watts on the two meter handband at 145.225 megahertz. Also, this is going into a 50 ohm dummy load connected to the output of the power meter shown on the video. Now, up on the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz, we see an output power of around 4 watts. Now, this radio cannot be legally used on the UK PMR band at 446 megahertz, but a quick check of the power output shows around 1.8 watts. So, the filters are really doing their job here considering this is advertised as a 270 handheld. Now talking of filters, let's take a look at how clean these transmissions are using a spectrum analyzer. Now in this test, I'll be using a tiny SA Ultra. Now, I'll link below if you want to get one of these yourself so you can test your own radios. So on the two meter band transmitting at around 145 megahertz, we see that the second harmonic is around 50 dB down from that fundamental which in my opinion is perfectly usable and within the limits set by those controlling radio boffs. Now will we see the same great result on 70 centimeter? Let's find out. So transmitting on 435 megahertz, we can see that the second harmonic is around 45 dB down from that fundamental. Again, this is perfectly acceptable and proof as to why this radio has an FCC pass. Now throughout this video, I've mentioned the possibility of using custom firmware with the K5 and the K6, this radio. Well, here is one of the possible features you can include in the custom firmware. Here we're looking at a spectrum analyzer currently sat at the top end of the airband. As the K6 has AM demodulation along with FM, the K6 can receive air traffic communications from planes and airport towers. Now using this custom firmware feature is an example of seeing band activity allowing quick tuning to an active frequency. Now talking about air band, I'm not entirely impressed with the audio quality of the AM demodulation. Let's take a listen to this. If any of you guys have the K6, does your airband sound like this? In my opinion, it sounds quite distorted and maybe it's not demodulating properly or maybe the signals are quite strong. I even put in line an FM radio filter to filter out any nearby strong stations, but that didn't seem to help. So how do we get the custom firmware into the K5 or the K6? Well, luckily there's a dedicated website that lets you choose the custom features you want and then it compiles the firmware right in front of your eyes automatically. Now I'll link this website below, but you start off by choosing which features you want to include. The first is apps in which you can choose just one. Now this is related to the amount of free storage in the flash memory. A couple of interesting apps here, such as a proper S meter or a spectrum analyzer like we just saw, or even a digital transmission text messenger. As we scroll down the features, we can enable other features like change the battery icon or even change the boot screen. Changing the font or expanding the frequency range is just as simple as checking a checkbox. Now just keep mindful of the flash usage amount that's shown on the right. Now luckily some of these features are zero bytes and don't take extra memory. Another useful mod is to replace the NOAA weather frequencies with say the UK PMR band or whatever legal frequencies you want to use as they can be recalled extremely quickly using the function button on the keypad. Once you've selected the features you need, click the blue button titled Patch Firmware. 
Now keep an eye on the box just to make sure there's no errors. And the most common error will be that there will not be enough flash memory. If you get that, you'll need to go back to the selections and choose something that uses less memory. Now underneath this, there's two gray buttons. The one on the right allows you to flash your radio directly from the browser. However, I never got this to work and I was using Chrome. So I click the left gray button and then save the flash file locally. On the top right of the window, there's a link to download the updater software. Now this runs on Windows. This application will allow you to load the newly downloaded firmware to your radio. Now we have the firmware file, we just now need to put the radio into firmware download mode. So power on the radio while holding the PTT button. And then the LED on the top will be a solid white. Plug in the programming cable and then open the updater software. Choose the COM port that's assigned to your programming cable and then click connect. Then click the button with the three dots to select the firmware file that you just downloaded. Then lastly, press update. What should happen now is the white LED will start flashing on the radio and the progress bar on the software will start to fill up. Now once complete, the radio will restart and the new firmware will be flashed. You can now go ahead and test out all of those new features that you added. Of course, you can go back to the website and choose some of the other custom settings, patch the firmware and download it and do it all over again if you want to try a different feature. Unfortunately, you can't get all of the features in the same firmware because they just take up too much flash memory. But just pick the ones that's going to be useful for you. Anyway, guys, that's the Quangshang UV K6. Let me know if you've got this radio down in the comments and how you guys get on with it. I'll specifically be interested to hear how you get on with receiving airband on that radio. Also, if there's any of the custom features which you think are pretty useful, let me know about those too. Which ones do you prefer? Until the next video, take care and I'll see you in the next one.